and introduce yourself. Yep, my name is Mark Glady. I'm an agronomist with Winfield based in western Minnesota. And today we're going to go through a brief demonstration of our spray table here where we're going to look at three different nozzles uh, and, and display what type of droplet sizes are produced from different types of nozzles. Okay? And the impact that has on whatever crop protection product we're spraying, we want to make sure we always match up the right droplet size with the, the crop protection product for the droplet size that it calls for. To start with, I'm going to show you uh, extended range flat fan nozzle first. So if we turn our sprayer on, I'll have the pressure set to right at about 40 pounds of pressure. This is a flat fan nozzle. Uh, produces a very fine droplet, or a medium coarse droplet I should say, on the smaller end of the spectrum where we'd like to be in our crop protection applications. And if I use our water sensitive paper here, where I'm going to run this underneath the, the spray pattern and every place the spray droplet hits it, it should turn blue. So here we go, here comes 10 mile an hour. Yeah, turn the sprayer off. If you look at the droplet uh, distribution, the size relative to the next nozzles you're gonna see is on the smaller end. Um, the coverage and the ability to completely cover the majority of a, a weed leaf surface area is very good with this nozzle. But as you can see from the, the fines or from the spray, if I turn the sprayer back on, um, even though the advantage is good coverage, the disadvantage of nozzles that make small droplets are potential off-target movement. You can see a little bit of the fines of the small spray particles that are drifting or floating away. Yep. So if we go to the other end of the spectrum, if I get another piece of water sensitive paper here, and if I change from the flat fan nozzle to an air induction nozzle, okay, you can hear the nozzle sucking in air, that's what makes that whistling sound. You can see a lot of the fines have disappeared. Okay, we don't see that driftable fine of those small droplets anymore. It's a much coarser droplet relative to the flat fan. Here comes the water sensitive paper. Okay. And if I give you a frame of reference, so we've got the air induction nozzle on the fly swatter here versus the flat fan nozzle still in my hand. So you can see the droplets are much larger with the air induction, which is great for drift reduction but we sacrifice the amount of surface area of the leaf we could cover. Okay. Flat fan, good coverage, um, but the drift is uh, the disadvantage. So there are situations like where we'd want to use a flat fan, like a post-emergence herbicide application in soybeans, where we're tank mixing uh, a Flexstar or a Cobra or an Avalanche, a, a Group 14 PPO inhibitor herbicide. You want this coverage, but you don't want the drift. Uh, that's why we talk about using the right adjuvants. Uh, we've talked a lot about recommending interlock to take a lot of the small fines out of the spray solution, make them more to a medium size, help eliminate drift, but still get good coverage. Yeah. And the last nozzle I'd like to talk about would be an AIXR. So if I turn uh, my sprayer back on, I'm gonna, let me go back. I'm gonna go all the way through the systems again. So here we've got the flat fan really good coverage nozzle, but the disadvantage is the potential fine particles for drift or eva loss to evaporation. Air induction, larger droplets, great drift control, but we sacrifice coverage. The third nozzle I'm going to show you here is called the AIXR. Okay. So more of a medium sized droplet. If I load up another water sensitive paper card, okay. you can see right away that the, the spray isn't as coarse. It's it uh, looks like a finer spray, but you don't see the mist or the fog or the fines like we did with the flat fan. Yeah, so here comes the water sensitive paper. And if I kind of get these all together here, get my cards organized. Okay. So the top left was the flat fan, the top right is the air induction, and the one on the fly swatter is uh, the AIXR. So uh, you can you can generally make out the, the droplet sizes that the AIXR is more of a medium shape. You don't have nearly as many big droplets, still some medium size, medium small ones for coverage. So this is a nice happy medium nozzle where, uh, not that we ever recommend having one nozzle on the farm because it's tough to make one nozzle do everything, but this does kind of split the difference between small nozzles or droplets, nozzles that make small droplets for coverage and nozzles that make large droplets for drift control. I think to summarize or wrap up our demonstration here today, uh, I happen to be using T-Jet nozzles, but irregardless if you're using Wilger or Hypro or Green Greenleaf or various other nozzles, the, the take home message is that make sure that you're selecting a nozzle that provides the droplet size that you need for the crop protection product you're spraying.
So I mentioned a lot of the, the post-emergence herbicides for soybeans. We want good coverage. If we're spraying a straight glyphosate or a pre-emerge herbicide product, we don't need to have as good a coverage. You can get by with larger, more coarser droplets. So the main message is make sure you match up the nozzle you're using to give you a droplet size that meets the requirements of the crop protection product you're spraying, irregardless of the nozzle manufacturer. Thanks for listening.